Okay, to explore Walther's ideas about patterns of sedimentary facies, I want us to think about a landscape from two different perspectives. The upper perspective here shows a map view, sort of like a Google Earth view, if you will, of different sedimentary settings, you know, where the sediments are spawned in a mountain range over on the left, to being transported downstream in a braided river system, and then going into a more mature trunk-like river that then meets the ocean in a little delta, spreads sediments out along a beach, and then the uh, shallow ocean water, the flooded part of the continents, the continental shelf, and then the deeper ocean uh, further offshore. If we translate that into a drawing here, it might look something like this. And then we can take that uh, and add some locations to it. And we'll just call these A, B, C, D, and E for simplicity. Now let's transfer that information down to the block diagram that we see down here at the bottom. So for right now, we'll cover the sides because we don't have any information yet about sediments long-term pattern of accrual. And let's put the sedimentary settings on top of that surface. And you can see sea level over there uh, on the right where the sea meets the land is the shoreline there. And that's at uh, location C roughly. And then we've got A and B in the terrestrial realm. And then we've got D and E in the marine realm. Now we want to think about the sediments that accumulate in these different settings. So let's go ahead and put different sedimentary bases down here. So we've got kind of a gravel facies at the most upstream end of the system, then coarse sand at B, finer sand uh, at C, and then offshore we've got silt for D, and then clay at location E, furthest offshore. Okay, so if we give a little bit of time to the system and we keep sea level in exactly the same place, Maybe we build up something like this. So deposits of gravel at location A, deposits of coarse sand at location B, deposits of fine sand at location C, silt at D, and clay at E. Now what happens if sea level goes up? Well, sea level goes up and then all those different facies track with the new sea level going inland. And if sea level were to go up a little bit further, they would track inland a little bit more. Now we see a pattern down here in the wall that's facing us where we have coarse sediment that we started off with that's overlain by finer sediment. So in other words, uh, more nearshore facies are overlain by the deposits from more offshore locations. If we had a series of cores that were drilled down at locations A, B, C, D, and E, we might get something like this. So location A shows the original gravel overlain by coarse sand, overlain by fine sand. Location B doesn't show the gravel. It just shows coarse sand overlain by fine sand, overlain by silt. Location C, fine sand, silt, and then clay. And then locations D and E, you can see uh, they're basically clay dominated. D's got a little bit of its original silt deposits at the bottom. But then as sea level went up, that location got to be deep and offshore and basically only accumulated clay from then on. And location E has been offshore this whole time. It's been really far away from the original source of clastic sediments and so we've got nothing but clay to show for it. We can correlate these different uh, packages say of fine sand or of silt across these different locations and these are time transgressive units. So time is sort of like the bottom row the middle row and the top row here, and that fine sand deposit, for instance, is oldest at location C and youngest at location A as sea level has gone up over the course of geologic time. So how do we interpret a package of sediments kind of like this? We think about terrestrial facies that are coarse down at the bottom, and then shoreline facies that are finer towards the middle, and then marine facies near shore and offshore up towards the top. So if we have this pattern that's coarse at the bottom and fine at the top, that's called a fining upward pattern. And it implies that sea level must have gone up at that location to take us from an original deposit that is terrestrial to a later deposit that is marine.
If we go back to our original situation, and instead of raising sea level, we drop it instead, what do you think the core samples are going to look like at these different locations? Here's some empty cores, so let's mentally fill in the bottom part of each picture, and then think about what's going to happen if sea level drops and these different sedimentary facies track seaward from their original positions. Well, hopefully you fill it in with something that looks like this where each of these original facies is overlain by coarser, more nearshore or more terrestrial facies through the course of geologic time. That is the sedimentary signature of sea level dropping at a given location, also called a regression. You start with offshore marine facies, and then as time goes by, you get nearshore facies that are still marine, shoreline facies, and then the terrestrial stuff. If we go back to the situation we had where sea level was at its highest, and then sea level began to drop again and move back out across the region, then we end up getting a pattern that looks like this, where we have this sort of thin zigzag kind of pattern that appears in the vertical cross section. This is the sedimentary signature of that sea level rise followed by a sea level fall, or in other words, a transgression followed by a regression. Here's a look at two different stacks of sediments from two different locations, and these tell two different stories. One tells the story of a transgression followed by a regression, and the other one tells the story of a regression followed by a transgression. Let's look in detail at the first one. The bottom part of this shows a fining upward pattern. So we start off coarse, and then we go towards finer clastic sediments as we go up through the sequence. That's a transgression. But that's not the end of the story, because the upper half of the story is sort of the reverse of the bottom half of the story. We start off with offshore deep water facies, and then over time we get progressively coarser and terrestrial facies. So that is the signature of a regression. The point in the middle where the sea level is the highest is called the high stand, or we can also use the terminology of the maximum flooding surface. So in other words, the greatest amount of land that was underwater at that time. Here's a look at five different cores again from five different locations. What is the pattern that we see here? Does this show us transgression or regression? Does it show a transgressive regressive cycle? What's the overall pattern? Well, hopefully you note that the bottom half of each of these cores shows a fining upward sequence and the upper half of each of these shows a coarsening upward sequence. So we can interpret this sequence of adjacent cores then as showing us evidence of a transgression followed by a regression. And right there in the middle would be that high stand or maximum flooding surface, and that divides the cores essentially into two kind of mirror images, top to bottom. And so the lower half of each of those cores is evidence of a transgression, and the upper half is evidence of a regression. Here's that other original core that I showed you where we have the opposite pattern. This one has a regression, a coarsening upward pattern at the bottom half of the core, and in the upper half we see a fining upward pattern, so a transgression. The same thing applies to carbonate dominated systems. We've been talking about siliciclastic systems, but you can get the same thing in carbonate dominated systems as well. So here we've just got four sedimentary facies shown. These are grainstone at location A, packstone at location B, waxstone at location C, and mudstone at location D. The overall trend here is more biological skeletal material towards the left, in other words, the shallow setting where lots of organisms like to live, and where it's wave wash, so finer sediments like mud are stripped away. And as you go offshore into deeper water, you get less skeletal material and more and more mud. In the picture down there at the bottom, you can see the sedimentary signature of a regression followed by a transgression. So the sort of arrow shapes to the different tongues of sediment of the different facies have tracked seaward and then tracked back landward over the course of geologic time. How would we interpret this? Well, hopefully you see that there is a fining upward pattern in each of these. And so these different locations all show evidence of a transgression. Now that's gonna be hard to tell just from location D alone, because you just have mudstone on top of mudstone on top of mudstone. 
but any of the other locations should give you the overall finding upward pattern that allows you to tease out the sedimentary signature of these relative changes in sea level. Thanks for your attention.